Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, fans and viewers, it is I, Christian Mo. Today we are cruising around in the 2015 Chrysler 200C. Now, before you change over to find a different video to watch, just hang out with me for a second because this thing is actually really nice in a lot of ways and I think you guys should be interested in it. Now, as you are all likely aware, the Chrysler 200 is the continuation of the terrible, horrible mess that became the Chrysler Sebring. So when Fiat took over, they killed the Sebring, they made the 200, and they've been slowly improving it ever since. This, for 2015, is a new model. We have better exterior, we have nicer interior, uh, a bunch of upgrades overall, especially to safety. And um, it's a really, really nice thing. So this is the 200C, which is the highest model you can get. They have the 200S, which sits below this. It's a little bit sporty, got like some different wheels, some black trim, things like that to make it look a little nicer. But this is the luxury one. And uh, when it comes to luxury items, they've ticked all of the boxes. So you probably can't see it in this angle, but here on the dash, there is a wood veneer and it is legitimate real wood veneer just like you would find in something like an Audi and it's this nice matte finish so it's kind of soft to the touch it doesn't it's not covered in a huge chunk of glossy lacquer so it doesn't look like it's made out of plastic that's on the door panels that's on the dash I've got wonderful chrome trim that runs around the center stereo unit here there's a chrome ring around the steering wheel I've got one here on the dash very nice feels good it's cold to the touch like real metal uh, I've got leather everywhere so steering wheel is leather armrest is leather seats are leather I've got leather on the door panel here it's all got this really nice sort of like deep beige golden sort of contrast stitching that you can kind of see there it's it's not quite silver it's not quite gold it's not copper it's this weird sort of color in the middle and it's very nice and uh, there is some slightly contrasted piping here on the outside of the seat that you can't probably quite see. Um, and it's just, it's, it's a really nice place to be. These seats themselves are heated and cooled. The steering wheel is heated. I've got the 8.4 inch Uconnect system here in the front. It's got navigation and I can connect to apps and it'll read me text messages and all that sort of stuff. And I just am, Every time I get in this thing, I'm impressed with just how far this car has come. And I actually have a lot of experience with this machine. Um, my father is a huge fan of Chrysler and Dodge vehicles in general. Um, he had a Dodge Dakota pickup truck, and then he swapped that, and he got a Sebring Coupe. I think that was a 2003 or so Sebring Coupe. Then they got rid of that and they have a 200 now. They've got a 2012 200 uh, that's decked out with all the bells and whistles, and now I've got the 2015. So I've experienced all of the iterations from the terrible up to the improved, and now I'm in this. And from a design standpoint, from a comfort standpoint, from a technology and equipment standpoint, this thing is leagues ahead of any car that, like, of this class that Chrysler has ever made, and it's actually leagues ahead of most of its competitors. Um, so powering this thing, I've got the Pentastar V6, which is 295 horsepower or so and 262 pound-feet of torque. That is out of a 3.5 liter V6. No turbos, no nothing, just all motors so you get that great instant response. The transmission that's powering this thing is Chrysler's fancy new nine-speed auto. So I've got the same little dial here on the dash that changes gears like you get on a Jeep Grand Cherokee or like a Jag. Uh, so I've got park, reverse, neutral drive, and sport. If I hit sport, I have little paddles here on the steering wheel. Um, the nine speed is great. It's super smooth. It goes about its business without any interruption from me. Shifts are really seamless. Uh, my only problem with it is the spacing and the fact that there is nine gears. Because um, even at 75 miles an hour, if you have the cruise set, if you go up any sort of a grade, the car has to downshift from ninth to eighth keep you in the in the power band that's how tall ninth gear is and um, it's actually pretty funny this is one of the only cars I believe in the world that I've ever been in 
um, that I got better fuel economy with the cruise control set at 80 miles an hour than I do with the cruise control set at 75 miles an hour. Because here in East Tennessee, again, with the rolling hills, at 80, the car is high enough up in the rev band that it won't downshift to 8 to climb, to climb a, a slight slope. So I was actually staying in ninth more, so I got better fuel economy that way. Um, performance is only adequate um, considering you know the kind of car it is. It is very quick in a straight line, uh, but it is very comfortable. So if you decide you want to throw it into a few corners, things get a little iffy. Um, it's a very nose-heavy machine. It will plow. Um, it will plow at speeds probably a little lower than you expected. But if you get out of the mindset of, even though this is a low, swoopy, four-door kind of car, it's not a sporty thing. And once you get away from that and treat it like what it is, this extremely comfortable highway cruiser, this machine excels. Like I'm sitting here right now, you know, I've got the cabin set just so with the dual zone climate control. I've got my heated steering wheel on and I'm just relaxed. It's quiet, it's comfortable. The seats are nice. They're, I don't know, 147 way power adjustable. I've got a lumbar sport that goes forward and back and up and down and the headrests are padded just right. And I can cruise in this thing for hours and hours and hours. I took it home for Christmas to see my parents. Uh, that's probably almost a 300 mile round, round trip. You know, and it was just, I got there and I felt great. I was relaxed, I was comfortable. It is just an awesome machine. Um, and again, when you really want to, you can put it in a little sport, you can pull on a couple paddles, you can stand on it. The car will just launch away. Ooh, little flick of the traction control right there. And you are just gone. And then when you don't want to, you put it back in drive, let the car handle all the shifting, and you just ease on about your life. Um, one of the big things for 2015, besides the new looks, is uh, that 9-speed auto. With the 9-speed versus the old 8, uh, Chrysler is claiming a 3 mile per gallon increase on the top end. And uh, my window sticker here says we should get 19 city, 23 combined, but 32 highway. Um, unfortunately, because I don't live in Kansas where it's flat, um, I have had that issue with it never wanting to be in ninth gear. So my fuel economy is sitting just under 26 miles per gallon. Um, and of the, let's see how many miles I've actually driven. Of the 517.8 miles I've already driven, at least 400 of those miles have been highway. So fuel economy is not quite getting close to that magic 32, or even really that magic 30 mile per gallon number that uh, Chrysler is touting. But again, that just has to do with the topography of the land that I'm at. I just, with the transmission having to shift out of nine all the time to help me climb a slope with, with the cruise control on, I just can't hit that number. Um, otherwise though, everything here is pretty great. Pricing is competitive. So this machine starts at $26,000, which is super cheap. And this that's for the 200C, which is the luxury one. But um, I do have almost $10,000 in options on this specific car. So I've got the customer preferred package, which has all of the safety equipment, which we'll go into in a minute. Uh, I've got a $600 paint job for this beautiful white metallic paint that I have. Um, I've got a thousand dollar set of optional 19 inch wheels. I've got the lighting pack with LED lights and HIDs and all that sort of stuff. Um, the upgraded v V6 engine, which you have to have was another two, two grand. So, you know, I have a lot of these options that add some of these extra niceties to this machine, but still, even after destination and everything, we're looking at $35,285, which is not a lot for a car in this class packed with this much luxury and especially safety tech. So I have basically every safety feature imaginable. I have radar guided cruise control with a complete stop and go. So if you are hit a traffic jam on the highway, the car will come to a complete stop on its own and then continue again on its own without any sort of pedal intervention. Um, I have lane keep assist, which is not a little light flashes if I cross over the double yellow. The car will actually slightly steer me back to where I need to go. And actually, let's turn that on real quick 
and um, you should be able to see the wheel. So we're going to come over this crest, and the car's going to dip, or the road's going to dip down to the right. And I'm going to let go of the wheel. Nope. Car says negative. Oh, I guess I turned it off instead of turning it on. Anyways, we'll run that again in a second now that it's back back on. But um, the way the system works is it uses all kinds of radars and cameras and things, and it sees the line, and it tries to get the car to follow that line so you don't crash and die. Um, I also have, like, a crash avoidance system with, like, the lane watch thing, so if I'm not paying any attention and I'm in slow city traffic and a car in front of me stops and I don't notice it, the car is supposed to hit the brakes and stop for me. Um, I'm not brave enough to try that, so I haven't. <laughs> um, it's got a fancy parking assist that the car will apparently park itself. I obviously have all the radar sensors to help me park the car. Um, you know, there's like a thousand airbags inside this thing. It has all those cool features. I mean, everything that you would expect to find on a Camry or an Accord or anything like that is in this machine. But I've got this cool new Chrysler look, Little nice low slung head headline. I've got these beautiful long mirrors and it's I mean, look at this thing. This doesn't look anything like a Toyota in, in here. It's beautiful. I'm just, I really am kind of smitten. The only problem I have with it is it's not exciting enough, though. But, you know, it's, it's not a back road bomber. So if you can get over that, like, it's just a wonderful little machine, and I am super happy with it. Um, you know, could be a little cheaper could be a little faster suspension could be a little stiffer but that's just my personal preferences for 90 percent of people this car would be anything you would ever want or need um, as a big bonus to me um, all of those safety features uh, systems i've been discussing are all here on the dash and they're all deactivated with a single button so there's one for parking that's off one for the lane keep assist that's off one for the crash avoidance thing that's off with the cruise control there is no funny, weird dance to turn off the uh, adaptive cruise. There's a single button here that says cruise control, and there's one below it that says adaptive cruise that's next to the distance setting. So I can either just turn on cruise, or I can turn on adaptive cruise. Like, it, it doesn't make me choose. Like, I have to be stuck with this. So it's all very good in all of the right ways. Uh, the Uconnect system has voice controls. That's only okay. Otherwise, Uconnect is nice. It's one of the better infotainment systems you can get in a car. And um, yeah, I really don't have a lot more to say about this thing. I have 300 horse horsepower. I've got nice leather seats. I have a heated steering wheel. I have real wood on the dash. Thing looks like a million dollars from the outside, especially with these uh, optional wheels that I've got. You can see photos of that in the written review that'll be up on, on topspeed.com. But it's just such a wonderful little thing to be in. And it blew me away, to be completely honest. So, again, this is 2015 Chrysler 200C. New car, lots of new leather, lots of new wood, lots of new chrome. Big, roarty 300 horsepower engine. 26 miles to the gallon. If you live somewhere flatter than Tennessee, apparently you can get 32 miles to the gallon out of it. And uh, you get all of that for 35 grand. And if you think that's a lot of money, why don't you try pricing out a nicely equipped Camry or Honda Accord? Because those things get expensive quickly. Anyways, thank you guys for joining me. Once again, I am Christian Mo. If you have enjoyed this video, please go ahead and let me know by leaving me one of those comments below. If you think it was terrible, also please let me know in those comments below because I want to know what you guys like and what you don't like so I can work on bringing you guys the content you enjoy. Obviously, I can't change my opinion, so if you think that I'm wrong about the car, well, please still let me know, but that can't change. So, anyways, hope you guys have had a wonderful time, and I will see you guys next week or so with another car review. So, thank you for joining me. I'll see you guys next time.